In this lesson, we're going to focus on converting grams to atoms. So let's start with this problem. How many atoms can be found in a sample of 75 grams of silicon? I'm missing the word of, but mistakes happen. So how can we convert grams to atoms? First, you need to convert grams to moles and then moles to atoms. So that's the blueprint of what we need to follow, for the most part. In order to convert grams to moles, you need to use the molar mass of silicon. Based on a periodic table, the molar mass of silicon is 28.09 grams per mole. So you need to know what this means. This means that one mole of silicon contains a mass of 28.09 grams. And so this is the conversion factor that we're going to use. So let's begin. So let's start with 75 grams of silicon. And let's convert it to moles. So since we have the unit grams of silicon on the top left, we need to put grams of silicon on the bottom right so that those units will cancel. So this is 28.09 grams of silicon. On top we're going to put one mole of silicon. So these units disappear. And now there's one more thing we need to do. We need to convert moles to atoms and we can use Avogadro's number to do so. One mole of silicon contains 6 times 10 to the 23 atoms of silicon. So that's the second conversion factor that we need to use in this example. So now in the next fraction, I'm going to put one mole of silicon on the bottom because I need those units to cancel as well. On the top of that fraction, I'm going to put uh, that stuff. 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of silicon. So at this point, we just got to do the math. So it's 75 divided by 28.09 multiplied by 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And so you should get 1.608 times 10 to the 24 atoms of silicon. So that's how you can convert grams to atoms. So basically, you got to take the mass in grams, divide it by the molar mass, and then multiply it by Avogadro's number, for those of you who like to do things quickly. But if you want to take the step-by-step -step approach, I think it's good practice because later on in chem, you're going to be dealing with some harder problems. So you want to master stoichiometry and converting one unit to another because you're going to use it a lot in this course. Let's work on number two. How many atoms are in a sample of 100 grams of iron metal? So now based on the last example, see if you can do this one. So feel free to pause the video. So let's start with 100 grams of iron metal represented by the symbol Fe. Now we need to find the molar mass of Fe. So based on a periodic table, it's 55 0.85 grams per mole. So keep this in mind. This means that one mole of iron metal has a mass of 55.85 grams. So now we could cancel the unit grams. The last thing we need to do is convert moles to atoms and we could use Avogadro's number to do that. So one mole of Fe is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms of Fe. So we're going to take the mass in grams divided by the molar mass, which is 55.85, and then multiply by Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So the final answer is 1.078 times 10 to the 24 atoms of iron metal.
So now you know how to convert grams to atoms. But sometimes you might encounter problems that are much harder than this one. So I'm going to give you some examples of problems that progressively get harder than what you're seeing currently. Number three, how many atoms are in a sample of 250 grams of elemental sulfur, S8? Now this problem is very similar to the last one, but with one additional step. See if you can figure it out. Go ahead and work on this. So let's start with 250 grams of sulfur, S8. Now we need to find a molar mass. So this molecule has eight sulfur atoms. Each atom of sulfur has an atomic mass of 32.07. So eight times 32.07, that's about 256.56 grams per mole. So now that we have the molar mass, let's convert grams to moles. So one mole of S8 has a mass of 256.56 grams. Once you have the mole of a substance, you can convert it to atoms or molecules. But S8, is S8 an atom or is it a molecule? S8 is a molecule. A molecule is a particle that contains many atoms. It could be the same type of atom or different atoms. So first, we need to convert moles of S8 into molecules of X, excuse me, S8, using Avogadro's number. So one mole of S8 has 6 times 10 to the 23 molecules of S8. Now, a single molecule of S8 contains 8 atoms of sulfur. So the unit grams of S8 cancels, and the unit of moles of S8 cancels as well, and molecules of S8 cancels, leaving behind just atoms of sulfur, which is what we want. So it's 250 divided by 256.56, and then you got to multiply by 6.022 times 10 to the 23, and then times 8. So the answer is 4.69 times 10 to the 24 atoms of sulfur. So notice that the first two steps are identical. We took the mass in grams, divided by the molar mass, and then multiplied by Avogadro's number. Those three steps, or two steps, are going to be the same. The only thing is sulfur I mean, S8 is a molecule, not an atom. So you got to incorporate the fact that there are eight atoms of sulfur in that one molecule of S8. So you got to multiply your final answer by eight. If you do that, then you'll get the right answer. So just keep in mind, sometimes you got to change a substance from S8 to atoms of S. Number four, how many fluorine atoms are in 2.5 kilograms of sulfur hexafluoride? So let's start with this. Let's write the chemical formula of sulfur hexafluoride. So we have one sulfur atom, but six fluorine atoms. Hexa is associated with six. So now let's find the molar mass. Sulfur has an atomic mass of 32.07, and fluorine has a mass of 19. So six times 19, that's 114, plus 32.07. So that gives us a molar mass of 146.07 grams per mole. So now let's start with the mass in kilograms and let's convert it to the number of fluorine atoms. Feel free to try it at this point if you want to. So I'm going to start with 2.5 kilograms of sulfur hexafluoride. Now one kilogram is equal to a thousand grams. Now we still have the same substance, SF6. We need to keep track of the substance because 
we'll need to change it from FF6 to fluorine atoms. So that requires an additional step. Now let's convert grams to moles using the molar mass. So one mole of SF6 has a mass of 146.07 grams. So now grams of SF6 cancels. So now we have moles of SF6. We could convert it to molecules. So one mole of SF6 is 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules of sulfur hexafluoride. So now we no longer have the unit moles of SF6. Now there's one final step, converting molecules of SF6 to atoms of fluorine. So one molecule of sulfur hexafluoride contains six atoms of fluorine. That's the last step that you have to keep track of. So now we can get the answer. It's 2.5 times 1,000 divided by 146.07 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23 times 6. So the answer is 6.18 times 10 to the 25 atoms of fluorine. Number 5. How many atoms in total can be found in 780 milligrams of iron 3 carbonate? So what do you think we'll need to do in this problem? Well, I know what I would do. The first thing I would do is write the chemical formula of iron 3 carbonate. Now, how can we do so? Well, this is an ionic compound, so prefixes like mono, di, tri, tetra is not going to help us. What we need to do is find the charges of the ions first. Fe is a transition metal with a variable charge. The Roman numeral specifies the charge. So Fe has a positive 3 charge. Carbonate is a polyatomic ion that you should know. It's CO3 with a negative 2 charge. So let's switch the charges with subscripts and reverse the order. So it's going to be Fe2, CO3 times 3. So that's the chemical formula of iron 3 carbonate. Now that we have it, we can calculate the molar mass. So in this compound, there are two Fe atoms three carbon atoms, and three times three is nine, so there's a total of nine oxygen atoms. Fe is 55.85. Carbon has an atomic mass of 12.06, and we know oxygen is always 16. Two times 55.85, that's 111.7, and three times 12.01, that's going to be 36.03. 9 times 16 is 144. So now let's add up the three numbers. So I have a molar mass of 291.73 grams per mole. So now that we have the molar mass, let's go ahead and find the total number of atoms. So let's start with what we're given, which is 780 milligrams of iron carbonate, Fe2, CO3, 3. Now we need to convert milligrams to grams. One gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. So let's put the 1,000 milligrams on the bottom and the one gram value on top. So the unit milligrams cancel. And keep in mind, we still have the same substance, iron carbonate. 
It's just, I don't want to keep writing it. Now let's convert grams to moles. So there's 291.73 grams of iron 3 carbonate for every mole of iron 3 carbonate. So now I'm going to write it Fe2CO3. Now let's convert it to formula units using Avogadro's number. So one mole of Fe2CO33 contains 6.022 times 10 to the 23 formula units of Fe2CO33. So the unit grams disappears and moles of iron 3 carbonate disappears. Now we need to convert the formula units of iron 3 carbonate into the total number of atoms. So we got to find out how many atoms are in a single formula unit of that compound. So there are two Fe atoms, three carbon atoms, nine oxygen atoms. Two plus three is five, five plus nine is 14. So there's a total of 14 atoms per formula unit. So we're going to use that in the next step. So one formula unit of iron 3 carbonate contains 14 atoms in total. So we can cancel these units. And now this is going to give us the answer. So it's 780 divided by 1,000, and then take that result, which is 0.78, divided by 291.73 and then multiply that by Avogadro's number and then multiply that by 14. So the final answer is 2.254 times 10 to the 22 atoms in general. So we can't put a particular atom next to that answer. It's just atoms.